right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. I'm wearing a hat so I don't play with my hair. <laughs> so hopefully that problem is solved. Uh, also, just want to bring up, if you're liking the content on the channel, please become a subscriber. We are 41 away from becoming uh, hitting that 1,000 milestone that we've been trying to get to for about two years. So, uh, yeah, it takes as long as it takes, right? So uh, please join the fun. We've got comics, we've got movies, we've got TV, we got games, we got everything here at uh, Smirking Gun Reviews. Just about if it's uh, comic booky or superhero-y or dramatic, cover a lot of bases here. So also, I want to make sure that you guys check out other people's comic channels and follow them and subscribe. Uh, like if this this video basically is owed to uh, Wes from Thinking Critical and comics by perch if it wasn't for these two guys talking about this book i'd have never known about it so check out their stuff also check out uh ash on comics the real comic book stacks gateway into comics these are all solid people to be checking out if you're into comics if you don't like my stuff go on over there they are fantastic they're always putting out great content pretty much every day and so let's just jump into though Undiscovered Country, a fantastic new indie book for a while. I mean, is Image really indie? I mean, I guess it is, but Spawn, Savage Dragon, you know, all the Walking Dead, you know, I I don't know. I mean, yeah, they're still indie, I guess, but with books like this, I don't know how they are. I mean, they get to do a little bit. They get to have more freedom, for sure. And this is by Snyder and Sewell Snyder, who's a really great writer. I'm not a, a huge fan of the newest Justice League uh, that's for just recently. I think that might have to do more with the Year of the Villain stuff that's going on. But Sewell just came off of Daredevil, which has <laughs> almost always been a good book. But Sewell's run on that was also very excellent. And these two guys know each other. Uh, and there's a lot in here in the back about how, they, how this book got made. A lot of detail in this book. Not to mention a really great story. Um, it's been brought up by other people that it kind of makes them think of Lost. To me, this is more like Mad Max meets some of the ideas in like uh, the way that the country looks is more like uh, it reminds me of Man in the High Castle of what the country looks like if it was completely uh, I shouldn't say taken over, but I mean like the way like a place can kind of fall apart and branch off and become like different sections, almost like. Um, Secret Wars, how the uh, how each place had like a region. It makes me think of that a little bit. But this is what happens if uh, America went dark, closed its borders, and just shut itself off from the rest of the world. And it's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. I honestly, I honestly, I mean, I, I listened to the reviews and stuff, but I was like, I got to read this one for myself. You know. You always do, but I mean, in this case, when it comes to indie comics, which I'm trying to get more into, uh, you know, comics cost a lot, you know, cost a good amount of money when you spend a certain amount every week, and you know, four bucks is four bucks, you know, it's not going to break the bank or anything, but, you know, you want to make sure you're getting something for your money. And so, before I even get into, like, the main story, the, the crux of this is, like, they gave you a timeline. And the timeline is like what started this, and it's like uh, on 2029, July 2029, the day the borders closed, and then in retaliation for uh, the endless es series of escalating tariffs and trade wars that crossed multiple administrations, China called in its outstanding U.S. currency debt, causing an immediate devaluation of the dollar, inflation, and a brutal global recession whose effects were disproportionately felt inside the United States. So that's pretty scary because this is a real thing that could, you know, occur. And then we have the the test of the air wall that happens in the in the book that we know is in there. You know, we'll, be, we'll be talking about the power grid, you know, experiencing failure, blackouts, just everything starts to fall apart. And what happens to America when <laughs> things like this happen? And uh, so it's written by Snyder and Soul. It's got art by Giuseppe Camincoli and Danielle Orlandini. Man, those are some cre those are some names, man. I mean, I'm just Rob. Boring cracker name. <laughs> uh, 
eh, you know, we can't all have names like Orlandini. I wish I had a name like Orlandini. So it, it's kind of like going into Jurassic Park, right? Like these, we got this helicopter is going in. It's all mysterious. You know, you, I can almost hear the dun 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 dun, but like you know, because they're coming through the mist, and you know, everybody's worried. Everybody's really worried because nobody's had any contact, and they're worried that. You know, you get you get close to this thing, and they, they talk about this shield that they have. You know, we're going 300 miles an hour. We hit that thing, it's going to be like uh, Chris Hemsworth in Cabin in the Woods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Except without the, it'd just be more like a boom, and it's all over. And little by little, you know, they start giving little details just with dialogue, which is an, another great thing. Is the dialogue in this book is fantastic, and. They're there, or at least Dr. Graves, uh, this, this woman, she's there to get help for this disease, this virus, this thing called the Sky Virus, uh, that's, that's killing a lot of people. So while America has shut itself off, the world has gone going through a lot of stuff. Different governments have started up, probably because of, a lot of because America is shutting itself off. A lot of people not having America to rely on for things. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, America should be considered the end-all, be-all uh, that it probably, you know, thinks it is. But we're part of a group. And when one of the major parts of the group decides to step away from the table, the rest of the group has to figure out what to do to fill that hole, is what I'm saying. <laughs> So, but they, they, they get through, I love this first page. I mean, everybody's probably seen this. It's like previewed it or whatever now. I love this because that's what I feel like. It's like they're coming into the island, you know, like, and I guess that's where you get the Lost references is that nobody knows where the island of Lost is, you know, so it's kind of like just coming into this mystery place. Except in this case, nobody, you know, you have to crash land on the place practically or, walk, you know, get shipwrecked and washed on shore in that show. And I guess some of the story, the way the story beats play out with like flashbacks and like flash forwards, things like, well that flash forwards were like telling the backstory and then jumping back and forth is a little like that. But they get a missile fired at them and we jump backwards to kind of introduce some of our characters. And that's probably where we're going to, we'll probably get some more of that, uh, where we start in Athens where Dr. Graves is trying to cure these, you know, help these people that are dying from uh, the sky virus. And how they have uh, the tw these people like get the twists and the dusters and they're, they're, it's it's I I don't know any of this I don't understand it you know we're we're gonna as the book goes on and as the story gets peeled back and revealed uh, people are dying left and right from this and basically the whole world has only about a certain amount of time before it come kind of completely collapses in on itself Jesus Christ there's a lot of noise upstairs it's like somebody's like rustling. And we get this guy who comes to find her, and his name is Colonel Pavel Bukowski. He's a special unit of the Alliance Combined Air Operations Center, and he's there to bring her in. Uh, we see that people are desperate, you know, to cover the, just to cover themselves. You know, they try to take his umbrella away, and since the person that she's taking care of dies. I guess that's reason enough to go with her, I mean, or go with him, to, like, at least hear him out. Sorry. Let's get this so that we can make sure that this doesn't keep happening. And we flash back to uh, the crash, where they're just trying to get themselves together. How they, you know, they need gas, they can probably fix the plane, but they got to get to where they need to go because they don't want to be out in the open for too long. And we get... Um, you know, there's people there hurt. There's like a reporter there who's got a drone that you know she's doing a story. There's a kind of a mixed group here of kind of people that have. They're all supposed to be there for the same thing, but you can tell like as the story goes on that you know and they, you know, certain things that happen on on TV shows, things like that, where you just know. Not everything is being told to us by certain people, but we go to. Istanbul where they talk about the message that they receive from America and, and they get the Ameri the message and this guy named Sam Elgin is telling people like hey we know what's going on in the country and you're you know and the rest of the world we may have closed off to you guys but we know what's going on and we're inviting you to come here 
and we'll give you the virus and then maybe the cure for the virus and then maybe we'll start talking about opening up the world now I as soon as I heard this okay as soon as I heard this deal right I was thinking how, how, how would this really play out because to me it sounds like get somebody in there bring somebody in draw somebody in because they're probably in dire need of other things themselves so it's mutually beneficial to come in there and I would be thinking more along the lines of there is no cure like this is all just to draw them in draw certain people in draw specific people in maybe somebody who's used to working on viruses like Dr. Graves is maybe they need somebody to help them out somebody to help cure something of their own and once you're in how do you get out so you bring somebody scientific somebody who's good at this kind of work and you take that from the rest of the world how, you know what are they going to do about it they're fighting their own pro they've got their own problems what are they going to do mount an attack which probably would happen eventually as far as the story goes i could definitely see that happening but we all go you know they get into the logistics of the whole thing is this real uh if we go is this the plan because the plan should be saving the world from this virus which leads you to believe when everybody's going yeah 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 with too many people keep nodding their heads it means absolutely that is not the the full aspect of the plan if you can get that great that that would be fantastic but you know that there's going to be at least one or two like side plans once they get in <laughs> and they have Graves' brother there because conveniently come on some things have to be convenient, some things have to, you know, you have to have some tropes or plot devices to, you know, make it, make you know, further the plot. Her brother's a guy who got in and out. So if they get in there and they get stuck, at least they have a chance to get back out. Which also leads me to believe that when push comes to shove, when they're supposed to get out, something's going to happen to that brother. Okay, because if they get out, that's the end of the story. So I'd be definitely looking for something bad happening to her brother. Now he's a pretty badass character, but see, if you want to subvert those expectations, you take out the person. You know, it'd be like a you know like Snake Blitzen in a uh, you know Escape from New York. You know, gets into New York and then gets killed <laughs> after he finds the president's daughter. You know what I mean? And it's like now. <laughs> so they put together these people to get in there. And now they're, they're searching, trying to find her, because they're lost now out in the desert. They're trying to get to Colorado. They find this, like, TV. So they, the pilot stays behind to, like, and he's the Pukowski guy from earlier, who he stays behind. They, they, they're making their way, trying to get to higher ground, see where they, you know, where they are, get a lay of the land. There's, like, this old Xena TV from, like, 92, 93. What, I like that they make a point of saying it's one of the last televisions made in America. And for a second, I had to think about that. Like, what did he just say? Oh, in America. TV's made in America. I was like, wow, man. Like, when does this actually take place? Is this, I mean, of course, this is alternate. Well, it's not really history. It's, all, you know, it's possible future, which it's not. It's not future. This is not going to happen this way. But it could happen sort of this way. <laughs> and, uh, so they, you know, they get up to the top and the TV turns off and they see something else and this is where it just goes okay i'm on board i'm on board i am on board just from one like two like a one big page where all of a sudden what i see is this is exactly what i want <laughs> okay i needed something besides just standard political intrigue in the desert kind of walking around trying to figure out like and get a bike you know what i'm saying no, man, it's like Mad Max here, all right? And, and not just that, but it reminds me of, like, Saga, almost. Like, what, people riding sharks and stuff? Like, yeah. Or is that a land shark? Like, is it, does it talk like Chevy Chase? I don't know. All I know is that the bison, like, chews up Bukowski's leg for having foreign boots. And this guy's big. Look at him. He's on the bison, okay? That's not a small bison. That's a regular-sized bison. So these people, whoever they are, with their flag that looks like a cross between the American and the Confederate flag, so 
Sorry, D, you know, D.B. Weiss and uh, Benioff, we don't need your show on Netflix about it, the South won the Civil War. We got a combination of it, so don't let them have this. <laughs> Keep them away from this. So anyway, they, you know, they get spotted and they've got to get out of Dodge, like, quick. Because, I mean, come on, they're riding lizards and stuff. This is great. This is fantastic. And so these people kind of like, you know, they have to run for their lives. And we get more like just this cool army. Like they try to get to the other side and they're surrounded. Like they, they go to the other side and guess what? There's people riding a stingray. So somebody else comes out. They actually have the American flag on their chest to try to, you know, convince them that, hey, no, 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 I'm on the up and up. This is a real flag. It's, we're, we're part of this other group. So come with us if you want to live. And, uh, wow, there's like Arnold if he sounded like French. Oh. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> so he takes them in their little underground place where apparently this big, you know, this rock won't, you know, yeah. He says nothing will get past that. Did you see the army of people that were coming? I'm pretty sure that your rock better be made out of fucking adamantium, okay? So, and even then, the surrounding rock could be blasted apart. So, <laughs> there's only so many places they could have ran to, dude. But whatever. So he shows them that it, there are these people called, they call themselves the silent minority. They're on the run from this guy called the Destiny Man. And this is where they show like where the country was divided up. But when I saw the map, that's why I thought about Man in the High Castle. Where uh, in the Man in the High Castle, Japan and, and uh, Germany have the East Coast and the West Coast. And in the middle is like this like kind of dead man's land. And it's like everything's kind of divided up. But it also just, this part here is just like showing all the different places that are. And then it changes all the time. So there's like power struggles that move this map around all the time. So you got like, this is where Destiny is. There's Codelands, the New People, Pur Purple Mountain Kingdom, Tempest Tossed, the Shining Sea, which looks like the Great Lakes got flooded. And there's like kind of a sea serpent, like here be monsters kind of situation, like uh, Fort Knox and the Red Glare to the south. And so... They're there to find a cure for this disease. They don't know about any message that was sent. But they know who Dr. Graves is. And it turns out it is Sam Elgin. He does not look like the guy in the message. He looks like a tore up from the floor up version of Uncle Sam. And he wants you. <laughs> God, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to say before I say it. Yeah, and he says, I want you to save America. And they get a couple of quotes from people uh, talking about uh, from the New World, an oral history of the ceiling by Valentina Sandoval. So that's the first issue. It is kind of a big issue. And like I said, they go into a, a lot of detail about how they made this book and how they met at a con in Chicago. Hey, great. It's nice that uh, Chicago, where I, you know, kind of near where I live, uh, had a part to play. If they hadn't met here, maybe uh, we wouldn't have this book. So go Illinois. Really? Sorry. <laughs> but uh, they also talk about how they visited the CIA and uh, heard a lot of weird stories coming out of there. Probably shouldn't be broadcasting that. But <laughs> anyway, it's a real, real excellent beginning to a book that I might have never checked out otherwise. So I'm so glad I did. I am on board. This is immediately in my poll list. Uh, I can't wait to talk about this every month. I do think that this is a long-term story. I don't know how long it would go for. Hopefully it goes on for just as long as it needs. Uh, and not any further than that. Uh, but this just, yeah, I can't recommend this highly enough. This is the, like, okay, I, I liked New Mutants and X-Force a lot. I really, really did. But as far as non-X books, oh, and, you know, as far as independent books, this is the best one I'm reading right now. And other than Immortal Hulk, that's not the other X book, and maybe Daredevil, uh, right now, those are the best. That's the best book I'm reading right now. And I don't just impress easy. I read a lot of stuff, but like I was gonna review Ghost Rider number two, but I read it and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. But I'm not. I don't feel like reviewing it now because it's just Johnny Blaze went crazy in hell, but. And Danny thinks he's crazy, but, you know, yeah, Johnny's crazy, but he's also kind of...
kind of he's not wrong what he's really doing it's, it's a whole thing but it's not worth reviewing over undiscovered country like I was like okay I've got to get this review out now so even though you guys can already have watched Wes or Perch's uh, reviews hopefully I added a little something to the conversation because this is fantastic so definitely check this book out if you can so anyway with that being said if you like this review and you feel like hitting the like button go ahead and hit that like button please become a subscriber if you're not a subscriber please share this video please share my videos if you like this con content and you think you might know somebody who would also like this content do that as well if you don't mind otherwise this is Rob at Smirking Gun Review <laughs> it's just Robin Smirking Gun Review saying Desmond is my constant and have a great day peace out